popularity for the idea of Scottish independence seems to have slipped, even since the last time you had a referendum. And uh, people seem less keen than you on going ahead with this, we're led to believe. Research uh, published this morning by Professor John Curtis that shows, contrary to what you've just suggested, that support for independence is actually up since the referendum in 2014. And the number of people who think that independence would make Scotland's economy stronger has dramatically increased. So I think it's good for Scotland to decide whether there's a better future, whether by taking our destiny into our own hands, we can actually strengthen our economy, make our society fairer, keep trading, not just across the UK, but across the single market. So it's a positive debate. It's a timely debate. And it's one that's based on hope for the future, not the despair of Brexit that seems to be paralysing the UK government just now. You mentioned that, that research out today, which I, I think is by Professor Sir John Curtis, isn't it, as well, or co-author by him. That's what I said, yeah. uh, He has a um, different view, though, of your stance um, on, I, as far as I can see. You've picked out some figures, but there are different ones here. Certainly on your stance of um, trying to have go it alone in terms of a Brexit deal, you're obviously anti-Brexit. He says, actually, that's losing you popularity, not just with the Eurosceptics, but also with the Europhiles. It's gone down 2% with the Europhiles and a massive 15% with the arrest. OK. Well, look, the, the headline figures in, in that research really speak for themselves. You know, as you recall in the independence referendum, support for uh, independence was uh, 45% and the research published today, it's 48%. Now, that's pretty clear. You, you describe me as being anti-Brexit. I am absolutely, unashamedly anti-Brexit. But the country I lead is anti-Brexit. Scotland voted uh, more than 60% against Brexit. Now, we're two years on from that. We still don't have any great clarity, any clarity at all, in fact, about what the future relationship between the EU and the UK is going to be. Shamefully, the UK cabinet is imploding, can't yeah. decide amongst itself. Now, I think we need to have clarity on Brexit before Scotland was asked to take a decision about its future, but surely in mm. these circumstances, it's right that Scotland has a debate about is there a better alternative to the inevitable decline of Brexit that appears to be lying ahead of us. So, uh, I think there is an appetite for that in okay. Scotland, and I think it's a good and a positive debate to be having. You've criticised the government, the mm -hmm. Tory government, about the austerity that they've imposed, about the cuts to public services north of the border and all over the, uh, the, the UK, of course. But uh, you have your very own SNP report about the party's growth commission. Uh, the independent blueprint about uh, how you would go forward with independence, would it to happen? Now, this report actually says that the loss of money from Westminster were you to get independence that's, that's, uh, that's created by the Barnett formula would, that would mean that the SNP would have to impose austerity policies and recommends years of tight public spending to halve Scotland's deficit and in order to keep the pound. So actually, if you do go ahead with independence, you're going to have to implement then... the very policies that you've been against and you've criticised Theresa May and the government for over and over over again, which just sounds like huge hypocrisy there, Nicholas Sturgeon. Ben, it's what... quite... <laughs> well, if, if I was saying any of that, you would have a point. <laughs> I, I concede that. But the report you've just, well, I was going to say quoted from, you clearly haven't quoted from I it. I have quoted from it Because the report here. doesn't say what you've just said. You, the, the report, well, the report explicitly rejects austerity. The report recommends that an independent Scotland should have real terms growth in spending rather than the cuts we've seen. It says we should never allow fiscal targets to harm the okay. economy the way the UK so government has done. So just to be clear, and actually, then, if the well, independence let, let me point. No, hold on, hold on a second. Said, let me... No, just to be clear, there wouldn't be austerity in an independent Scotland. The independent experts who would say there would need the, the to be are just wrong, are they? The, the report doesn't say what you said. The report explicitly no, says we shouldn't question, follow just so we can clear it up. economics. Just so we can uh, clear it up. There would be no austerity uh, 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 post-Scottish independence. And it, it, those are people that say there would That's be the are wrong. Recommends. Absolutely. That's what the report recommends, mm. real terms, mm. growth and spending. What I was going to go on to say is if you were to apply uh, the recommendations in that report uh, to the 
experience of the last few years, then the cuts that we've had in public spending in Scotland would have been reversed. So the evidence is there that this is a report about, yes, dealing with the deficit that an independent Scotland would inherit, which incidentally has been created on Westminster's watch. It's not a reflection of independence. The report says that even if there was no additional growth in our economy as a result of independence, that deficit could be turned around within five to ten years without austerity. But crucially, the report okay. sets out a whole range of ways in which we could use the powers of independence to grow our right. economy faster, yeah. to match the growth mm. rates of other small independent countries and start to build more equality in our society. What date can we, uh, can the people here in Scotland and here in the UK understand about when you want this new independence uh, referendum to take place? I, I've said I won't consider the issue of timing until there is greater clarity on Brexit because I understand that people feel very uncertain, understandably, about what the future looks like in terms of Brexit. Hopefully, um, and I'm not in control of this, but hopefully we will start to see some clarity around Brexit emerge. We've got to. Uh, the alternative to that is the UK crashing out of the European Union without a deal. Uh, so we'll wait until some clarity emerges from Brexit and then we'll uh, make a judgment about timing then. In the meantime, the positive debate we want to have okay. is that is there a better alternative for Scotland?